It's time now for tonight's starting lineup. First for the Los Angeles Lakers, the Western Conference champion. And one forward, 6'8", from UCLA, number three, Trevor Ariza. And the other forward, seven foot from Spain, number 16, Paul Gasol. At center, seven foot from St. Joseph High School, number 17, Andrew Vino. One guard, 6-1 from Arkansas, Little Rock, number two, Derek Fisher. And at the other guard, 6-6 six, six from Lower Marion High School, number 24, Kobe Bryant. The head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers is Phil Jackson. Magic fans, it's playoff time. Lights. Magic fans, it's your boy Scotty B. Welcome out to the Emory Arena for game number four. We are live on ABC. Let's make some noise. Please welcome your community ambassador, Nick Anderson. Nick, what time is it? You know what time it is? It's magic time in five, four, three, two, one. Go magic!
Magic charged right back into these NBA Finals with the best shooting performance in Finals history. A blistering first half and a raucous crowd carried them to the Game 3 victory as they pulled within 2-1. to one. But despite all the euphoria here in Orlando and the crowd fired up again, it's still the Los Angeles Lakers who have the lead in this series. And Los Angeles has followed every one of their losses in this postseason with an impressive win. Will they take command of the series tonight? Or can the Magic even things up? It's time to find out. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Game 4 of the 2009 NBA Finals. Along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Doris Burke will join us shortly. The resilient Magic, they did it again. They bounced back after a heart-wrenching loss, get themselves back in the series. And as we mentioned, Jeff, they did it with an unbelievable shooting performance against a team that had defended them well. The question is, how do they do it, and can they continue it? Well, you can never count on shooting 62% again in a game. But what they can do is continue to play fast in transition, getting the ball into the paint first to start their drive and kick game. And if they pass on target like this possession and get LA in rotation, they can get good shots. The same with their pick and roll game. If they set solid screens, come off the score, they'll get shots like that. Rashard Lewis, critical jump shot late in game three. And you see the balance. Five guys scoring over 18 points. The question is, can they defend and rebound against this Laker juggernaut? And a Laker team that is going to be desperate and hungry after the loss like they've done all throughout the playoffs. But in game three, Mark, Kobe Bryant and the Lakers, they couldn't close it out. Now, Kobe took responsibility, but he also said defense was the reason that they lost. We've seen throughout the postseason when they play strong defense, they're almost unbeatable. That wasn't the case in game three. Well, absolutely, Mike. This is a Magic team that's absolutely lethal on the offensive end. The Los Angeles Lakers cannot afford to take off halves, which is what they did. The Magic shot 75% from the field. They have to play defense like they did in the previous four games. Bowling teams under 100 points and playing phenomenal. Not last basketball game. Kobe Bryant says we must play at a higher level defensively, but on the offensive end is Pau Gasol. They have to involve him because he's too athletic, too big, and too skilled to just be a regular guy on the floor. On the offensive end, it's a recipe for disaster towards the Orlando Magic's defense anytime Gasol touches the basketball. The Lakers still lead 2-1, to one, but the crowd's ready, the Magic's ready. Can they even the series tonight? We'll find out. Orlando, the starters are on the floor. There's your starting lineups presented by 99 from Rockaway. As we're set to go, a packed house once again at Amway Arena. They were so into the game. In game three, Magic players all giving them some credit as the whistle blows on the tip. Scott Foster asking Bennett Salvatore, was that a good toss? Salvatore says yes, so he says a violation against the Magic. If it wasn't a good toss, they'd do it again. Instead, it's Laker ball. Both teams started so hot from the field in game one. We talked so much about Orlando's great shooting. Lakers also shot the ball so well early on. That's one of the reasons they actually led after the first quarter of game three. Kobe Bryant had that brilliant first, but slow down afterwards. Ariza to the basket. Good hard drive. Too strong. Battle for the rebound. Turkoglu. And Jeff, you said rebounding will be critical for Orlando tonight. And the problem is they've got a rebound off the double team. They double team Kobe Bryant in the post. They had rotation, and they were still able to secure the ball. Bryant with a hand in his face drills his first jumper. Kobe Bryant saying yes, that he loved the challenge of the bounce back game. He said he took responsibility, did not have a good fourth quarter, and was not able to fill, fill the role of the closer. But he blamed it on the defensive end just as much as the offensive end. Lee again, wide open. 0 for 2 from that spot. Thing I like about Bryant, people said, hey, he hit the wall. He said, if I hit the wall, believe it, I'm going to run through it. That's a guy commit. And a foul on the pass. Bryant arrived very early here in the game, as usual, taking the extra reps, extra shots. You know, it happens all the time. You lose a tough game to a very good team on the road, 
and all of a sudden Kobe Bryant's tired? <laughs> he didn't play well for fatigue? Are you kidding me? He's not tired. He's the one guy that didn't go there. Everybody else talked about it. Bill Jackson said he looked it. Bill Bryant said, I'm fine. He didn't want to discuss it. To his credit, Ariza for three. Too strong. I tell you what, as a coach, there's certain guys that you worry about. Kobe Bryant is not one of them. Hey, sometimes the other team just wins. They beat you. The L.A. Lakers did not lose last game. Orlando won. And again, the shooting was terrific, but Stan Van Gundy, as Lewis backs in and lost the ball, said the reason they shot so well is because they got quality shots. The ball movement was superb. Ariza down low. Gasol blocked by Howard. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Gasol. His first rejection of the game. This is how you compete on a defensive end. Give up nothing. Dwight Howard without the foul. Meets Powell Gasol above the rim. Comes up with a clean block. Gasol didn't miss many shots in game three. He was nine for 11. Looked for the Lakers to go to him a lot more and a lot earlier. Lee spots up for three. Knocks that one down. Boy, you gotta like that. The rookie missed two in a row. No hesitation there. And that's exactly what I like most about it. Forget about your last two shots. Those are good shots. You're wide open. Step up and knock down the third one. And I'm going to tell you, the growth, Mike, is Howard's pass. That pass off the dribble, amazing. Lee tried to save it, but could not. He could not do this two years ago. Face up, drive it, and off the dribble, put it right on target. Great spacing, great pass, and like you guys both said, good job by Lee not turning it down. Tough pass for a rookie, starting in the finals, and guarding Kobe Bryant. Fisher with four on the shot clock, hand in his face, rattles it in. Fisher continues to shoot well in these finals. There's Lewis, Turkaloo. Back up to Austin. Good ball movement again. Lee. Not that time. Too strong. Rebound tip. Nearly taken by Howard. He's got it. Puts it up. Misses the layup. Gets it back again. Up strong. Won't go, but a foul. And a big smile from Howard as he'll go to the free throw line where he spent a considerable amount of time in this finals. We watched Dwight Howard on the defensive end with the block shot offensively chasing down loose rebounds active underneath this is when he's most effective creating havoc in the paint and I think his rebounding effort is so critical on the offensive end because you're not going to shoot great every night and he's the one guy that can give him extra chance points but I love what Orlando's done offensively they've gotten the same shots as they did in last game and they're passing the ball right on target. Lee has just missed. Sam Van Gundy talking about Howard and his improvement at the free throw line. Again, during the regular season, 59%, but 68 here in the finals. He's taken 41 free throw attempts the first three games, plus add these two. He's got nice form. Lots of times he goes up there and they're perfect. A little short arms at some time at the end. Good form may be a stretch. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. Nice rotation on the ball. All right. Lee goes for the fake. Shot is up. Won't go, but a foul. Courtney Lee, Michael Petrus, who done the majority of guarding Kobe Bryant, have been going for those fakes all series. So tough not to go for it. And Petrus quickly comes up as Lee has two. You know, and as, as a coach, it's frustrating. But if I'm Courtney Lee or uh, Petrus, I say, hey, this guy is great, coach. You come out here and try to guard him. I guarantee you'll fall for the bait every once in a while. But you have to be disciplined on the defensive end and force him to make that shot. You saw the numbers as Lee sits down. Kobe Bryant, 5 of 10 from the free throw line. It's not the worst he's had in the playoffs last year in the first round he actually shot four for ten in a game but struggled and he said he problem was that his elbow wasn't up even the ones that went down he said were like crawlers you don't expect them to have another one of those well, some guys miss free throws for an entire career and don't figure out what's wrong it only took him one night Brian hits his first two tonight. Just over three minutes gone by, and already some foul trouble for Orlando. Michael Petrus quickly in the game. Turkaloo. 
On the drive, all the way to the basket, lays it in, and a foul. Pretty left hand. He doesn't get there quickly, but he gets there. Well, nice little adjustment. Moved Rashard Lewis to the right-hand corner so there was no shot blocking as Turkaloo drove to his left. Those are the minor adjustments you can make in your spacing to get better shots. What's most important to me, watching him come off that pick and roll, he is going at a straight line to the basket, so it eliminates the possibility of Bynum or Gasol to meet him at the rim. A good job of exploding to his point. And Bynum, once again, a quick exit, picks up two quick fouls, so both teams some foul problems early for starters. See, if you're a coach, you should have the right to say, no, that's not really, we'll take the foul, but <laughs> keep him in, because we got a better chance of defending them if you're the Magic with Bynum in the game versus Odom. Ryan fires away. He's strong again. Howard already with five rebounds. Austin had that red hot start in his first four from the field. Spins, drives, layup. No good. Howard trying to keep it alive. Another offensive board. Howard stripped down low. And Orlando will have it underneath. His effort on the offensive board right now is great as Derek Fisher looks like he took a blow to the head. Fisher never afraid to mix it up down low. And he is shaken up. The veteran after struggling shooting early in the playoffs has found his stroke. He's done some good things in these finals. Let's watch. You see as him and Howard went for the rebound. How many point guards you see in there battling Dwight Howard? Well, Stan Van Gundy upset because they called the foul not in the act of shooting. Certainly making his case that Dwight Howard should be shooting two free throws, and I agree. Turkaloo kicks it out nicely. Again, good ball move. Beatrice off the dribble. Austin wide open. Odom runs at him, hits him, and a three-point foul for Lamar Odom. Austin will go to the line for those three free throws. And going back to that previous play of Dwight Howard where he's battling against Fisher, he's got to keep the ball up so it can't be stripped. And this should be a three-shot foul, but I, I love... What? Oh, they called it not on the shot. I think they called it against Dwight, whoever was guarding Dwight Howard. So the foul is against Gasol. My mistake, not against Odom. And offensive foul, Howard. Clearing some space as Gasol draws the charge. First foul on Howard. These two can battle pretty good. That was a tough one. I hate those calls right there. Let the men play like men. They've done that most of the way in these finals. Gasol blocked by Howard. Odom takes it right away and lays it in. In that situation, Dwight Howard is working too hard for the other guys on the floor to let him down. They have to get after the basketball, looking to secure it. That's the end of the defensive trip. Odom in the game early with the foul trouble with Bynum. And as we've been saying throughout, sometimes that's not a bad thing for the Lakers the way Odom has played. Although not a great game three. Turkaloo to the basket again. Vito Turkaloo, nice drive. And the Magic back up by one. Well, Turkaloo is as good as it gets as far as a frontline guy in pick and roll situations. Good defense from Beatrice. Turkaloo. Austin a little skip. That's a three-pointer. Puts it in. Second three of the game for the Magic. Austin looking to help. Gasol backs in. Good defense from Howard. Fisher, five on the shot clock. Well short. Lakers just three of ten to start. And they tried to lob it into Howard. Wasn't expecting it. And the second turnover. Make that the third turnover for the Magic. I thought that was a good look by Turkaloo. Just a miscommunication, but a good run on the floor. I think Dwight Howard in this first six minutes has played harder than at any time in this series. A couple of block shots, seven rebounds, and just a ferocity to him to start the game. 
Taylor at the midway point of the first five to the basket. Drive, shot's good, out of foul. Chance for the three-point play for Kobe Bryant. Beatrice is first. It was a very good move by Bryant. A missed help by Turkoglu. He's got to put his whole body in front. But that's just a tremendous finish as he's getting ridden off of his shot. Well, you're right, Coach. But Turkoglu, your job is to stop the penetration. Your job is not to defend your man. That's the help of helping you. Bad job by Turkoglu stopping Kobe Bryant. Exactly. Who is he guarding? Lamar Odom. You want them to kick it out into a Lamar Odom jump shot. Kobe Bryant gave credit to the Magic defenders from Game 3. He missed 11 of his last 14 from the field after that great start. Said they, they worked like a dog defensively through the kitchen sink, put a body on me. Said they played a great game defensively. Odom gets right up on Turkoglu. And a little too aggressive out on the perimeter. So Odom picks up the foul and we'll have a timeout. Well, Dwight Howard, good sprint of the floor. Looking for the seal, doesn't get the ball, good effort on the second shot, multiple jumps, stripped on the way up, but seven rebounds, two blocks. Welcome back to Orlando with the Magic leading by one. Well, the question can be asked, how does a team bounce back from a finals worst shooting performance in game one to a finals best in game three? Well, for the Orlando Magic, it has as much to do with the characters in their locker room as it does their character. As every player on this team knows, no one is taken too seriously. Hedo Turkoglu found that out in a recent film session. He was just in, in, a, in a locker room watching film, and he was arguing with Coach, talking about he closed out on Trevor Reza, which he didn't. Today, when he came in, I said, hey, it's one of the clips on the film. When we get to it, what we'll do is we'll show it twice, and we'll vote on it. And we watched it on film over and over, and we voted that he didn't close out, but he still joked with Coach, man, I had my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> so then he started what the little kids do, which is, well, a lot of other guys didn't close out either. <laughs> That's just the way the Magic do things. They have so much fun. We've heard the expression, he has his game face on. Well, for the Magic, the game face is a big, fat smile. It's not for everyone, but it works for this Orlando Magic team. I love the fact that I played on teams where you don't want to go to those film sessions. <laughs> the Orlando Magic get a 24-second shot, shot clock violation. You didn't want to go because you don't want to be exposed. The great thing about it, the ability to laugh at yourself, but also get work done while you're there. And if I had a vote, up eight in the fourth quarter, that's not a closeout. I'm voting against Turkoglu. I think Turkoglu even knows that. I hope so. At some point, give it up, Turkoglu. Right? Even the prime minister of Turkey would vote against that closeout <laughs> right there. And you bring him up. He got a call, Turkoglu did, from the prime minister earlier today, wishing him luck. Kobe Bryant, the turnaround shot won't go. I asked Turkle, was that the first time? He was, oh, no, we talked to him. We talked on a pretty much regular basis. He didn't call him to wish him good luck. He said, close out harder <laughs> against Ariza. <laughs> Head of state giving you a call. Hey, Mark, the president ever called you before a game? Yeah, I sent him the voicemail because I was working. Odom, oh, nice right hand, but too strong. And Howard, the rebound. Howard already with nine boards. Austin. Down. You know, Ray for Austin talked about being more aggressive and confident on the offensive end. It's a good job of realizing he was playing too tentative. He has come ready to play the last two balls. Odom jump shot. That won't go. Lakers struggling from the field. Offensive rebound blocked by Howard. His third rejection and gets it out to Austin. What a start for Dwight Howard. Austin the drive, flips it up, and puts it in. He thought he was drawing a foul and put up the floater. And a five-point lead now for Orlando. Dwight Howard can't play better than he's playing and only score one point. Odom. Nice move from Lamar Odom. The important thing for me is the Magic, they've got to play this way the entire game long because there's going to come a point where it's going to get tight. They can't slow it down, continue to push the battle. There were no big leads in game three. A foul on the entry pass. That's going to be Gasol's second. So Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum both with two. So that's the problem. If Bynum gets in foul trouble, then Gasol has to go to guard him. 
And this is good deep position, good entry pass by Lewis. So that's why you don't get upset with the referees via Dwight Howard for the offensive foul. Because Pau Gasol has a claim also thinking that that wasn't a foul. It'll all balance out. Understand that it's a long game. Continue to play. And I agree with you. To me right there, it's again, let the men play. All right, way off on that. Let's look at the other play. And DJ Bengus checks in for the first time. Well, Howard's got one, so good contest. Blocks it with the left hand, gets it out, and then Ray for Alston. Good defense by Fisher. Good finish by Alston. So Benga getting some minutes because of the foul problems. Benga in the playoffs has only played 12 total minutes. Only played two minutes here in these finals. A seven-footer from the Congo now in his fifth year in the NBA, 28-year-old, played pro ball in Belgium, and has not really received any kind of major minutes since coming to the NBA. He's played with Dallas, Golden State, and now the Lakers. And your Peaches defending Kobe Bryant recognize who's on the floor with him. He has to carry this Lake offense. Trevor Ariza way off the mark. The Lakers struggling 5 of 17. Meanwhile, the Magic, a good start again. They're 54%. Turkoglu, very aggressive going to the basket, lost it. And a whistle and a foul, and Turkoglu will shoot free throws as Ariza is called for his first. Will Jackson, who in game two, by the way, Jackson won his 41st NBA Finals game. Just Finals game. And that passed Brett Auerbach for most Finals victories as a head coach. Of course, he's got a chance to pass red if the Lakers win the championship this year. They're both tied with nine titles. It's amazing. 41 finals victories. An amazing accomplishment. Well, you think about it, too. He was having a hard time way back breaking into the NBA. Give Jerry Krause and Doug Collins credit for initially hiring him in Chicago. And then this guy... I don't want to hear about him just having great players. Of course you're going to have great players if you're going to win. He has maximized the talent at hand. When you think about it, he's won nine of the last 18 championships. Just incredible. Jordan, Bryant, Shaq. Who cares? He's still winning it. Bryant drills it. Kobe Bryant with his third field goal. That's right in front of us, folks. That is an absolute tough shot. Turkoglu again, the penetration. Tony Petit's in, played some good minutes in game three, way short there. And a loose ball foul will go against the Lakers. Howard had position. And see who the foul is. Might be against Golden, and that's his second. And then a technical foul is called on Trevor Ariza. A little frustration early for the L.A. Lakers. You can't do that. Bennett Salvatore hit him with a T. Right now, Orlando by three. Popovich talks all the time about when you get to this level, meaning the NBA Finals, how hard it is to win a game. We know they're going to attack the glass. Our will to keep them off the glass has to be stronger than theirs to get it. Everything physically and mentally into this game. Everything. Okay, everything you've got, every possession, everything you got. Let's go. Everything we got, baby. Ten minutes in. One, two, three. Championship. Well, message delivered, message received. Dwight Howard has played in hard in this nine-minute stretch, as I've seen in this finals from him. NBA, beware. If he ever plays with this energy and passion consistently with his strength and athleticism, you have no chance. This is tremendous effort and a dominating effort, only scoring one point. 11 rebounds, three blocks and just really giving it all he has. You look at the numbers, the 11 rebounds. That's just wanting it more. As Hito Turkoglu will go to the free throw line and shoot the technical foul. Then they'll shoot two on the personal foul. By the way, the record for most rebounds in a single quarter in any game, playoffs, the regular season, 19. The great Bill Russell did it back in 62 in the NBA Finals. 
Wilt never didn't have that, huh? That That's unbelievable. I thought Wilt had every rebounding record. Meanwhile, coming up at halftime, speaking of Bill Russell, an interesting conversation between the former great big man and the current great big man, Howard and Bill Russell, sitting down and chatting. That's coming up at half. As Howard to the line for the two free throws. And if I was Howard after that start, I would have said I should shoot the technical free throw. <laughs> That's a good point. The interesting thing for me when you look at the way that this guy is letting it all out. Stan Van Gundy at some point, he's got to give him a rest. There's no way you can play at this level for 48 minutes. The question is, who behind him is going to bring that same type of energy? And if you're coaching, there's no way you, you let him get to the free throw line of that. Yeah, like when he, when, yeah, you're right about that. But when he raises his hand for a rest, that's when you're getting a sip of water. And you're looking down. You don't want to see that he needs some rest. Jordan Farmer in the game. Farmer had some good moments. Farmer in game three. Benga again playing. Gasol and Bynum each with two quick fouls. Shot clock down to four. Long three. Farmer can't connect. And Howard will let that one go out of bounds. See, this is an easier lineup for the Magic to defend. The job is to force the ball away from Bryant and make the other guys on the floor score. Small lineup. I mentioned Gasol and Bynum. Odom also with the two fouls. Bill Jackson not wanting any of them to get the third one here in the first. So an interesting lineup to say the least. With Walt, Ariza, Bryant, and Farmar, and then Benga. As you mentioned, it's hardly played in the playoffs. Austin Howard. Wild pass. That's the sixth turnover for Orlando. None for the Lakers, but they've dominated in every other department. But he, re he had the right idea. The difference was Luke Walton did a great job of coming over and rotating, forcing that turn. Austin up on Farmer. Away for Austin. His first. He's not the penalty yet. He'll take it out. Last game was a shootout right off the bat. This game, a more of a defensive struggle. That's why every game takes its own personality on, and you can't try to drive too much, drive too much from one game other than the adjustment. And Petrus ball for the foul. Kobe Bryant. He does that so well. The defender thinks he's fine. All of a sudden, he gets his hands underneath. And then he just said, don't pull me up on that. Don't point at me. Oh, don't point at me. You better lip reader. Let's see. That's a foul. There's no question about it. And that's the same thing that, you know, talking to Stan Van Gundy, he said that our guys have to make sure their hands are up. Once you see the right hand of Beatrice down below the waist of Kobe Bryant, Bryant does a good job of swinging and coming up. That is a foul, the correct call. Beatrice, what a playoffs he's had. Defensively, he's had to guard Andre Iguodala with Philadelphia, Paul Pierce with Boston, LeBron James with Cleveland, and now Kobe Bryant. And although he's had some nights where his opponents had some big nights against him, he's done a heck of a job defensively, plus some real strong nights on the offensive end as well. Turkaloo, minute and a half left in the first. The drive, oh, that's a nice hesitation move. I wouldn't say he floated in the air, but he got rid of a reason. He's three for three. That's a shot you work on every day. That's a shot Steve Nash has mastered, fading away from the contest. Walton fouled on the pass. Tony Batie hit him. And Walton will shoot two. And it's a great move, not just the fadeaway, but also the strength to eliminate Banga and then fade away and the touch. Outstanding move by Turkle. The Prime Minister would be very proud of that shot. Prime Minister's probably taking credit for that shot. I taught him that on the playground. <laughs> Coming up, Game 5, Sunday on ABC. Again, an earlier start. Our coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. Tip-off shortly after 8, and Game 5 right back here at Amway Arena. And if the Orlando Magic win tonight, we'll definitely have a Game 6 Tuesday on ABC as the series will shift back to Los Angeles in a Game 7 if necessary, also in L.A. next Thursday.
Right now, the Magic with a four-point lead coming up on a minute remaining in the first. Austin, nice move, and the floater. Now Ray Frostman again in the first quarter. He's four for five from the field. Really the difference, Coach. He's coming off looking to score. Great hesitation, freezing the defense, and then finish. Walk. Josh Powell also in the game, and he's called for travel. You did not expect here in game four of the finals for the Lakers to have Josh Powell and Benga in the first quarter. With foul trouble, has forced Phil Jackson to use some seldom-used reserves. All three front court players have two fouls. Austin, and Benga throws it back. Dan Van Gundy wanted a goaltender. Calling for it. J.J. Reddick guarding in. Ryan jump shot. Puts it in. <laughs> wow. He only had 17 in the first quarter of game three. He got 13 here in game four. 13 of their 20 points. Shot clock turned off. Tony Petit. Reddick. Fires away at the buzzer, won't go. And that will end the first period. Dwight Howard came out with a force. 11 rebounds and three block shots. Dominant down low and perhaps more importantly, he got some Laker big men in foul trouble. Odom, Bynum, Gasol, all with three fouls early, all went to the bench. Part of the reason the Magic have a four-point lead after one. Well, Jackson, again, your guys in a little bit of foul trouble. What positions are putting them there? I don't know. You know, they're just getting tangling up in there. I don't know what the referees are seeing out there in this first quarter. There's some bogus calls out there, I thought. But, you know, we got both the, all our big guys in trouble. Lamar, you know, and uh, Powell and DJ, and, excuse me, and Drew. So we're going to be in a deficit now, starting out with these guys in, in uh, foul situation. We survived it. You know, we got to come back down and play our game. Outside of Kobe Bryant, you're having trouble manufacturing offense. What do you do on that end? Well, you know, we've, we've got what we want going right now in the game. It doesn't matter to us. We're doing exactly what we think is necessary. Oh, thanks. Mike. All right, Doris. So because of those foul problems, and again, those three each have two fouls. As you see Gasol back in, Josh Powell, who played three minutes so far in the finals, and Banger, who had played two, getting some early action. Benga back on the bench as we get set to start the second. Interesting move by Phil Jackson, coach. I would certainly have Josh Powell defending Dwight Howard as opposed to Powell Gasol. The danger of picking up his third foul. That's a tough call because obviously, as Jameer Nelson goes in and gets a layup. He probably hasn't guarded many men of size, but I agree with you. The more time you can buy Gasol, the better served you may be. Nelson, who has not played well in the limited minutes, struggled in game three. Although the team played pretty well, he's on the floor. We have a foul away from the ball. And Mike, I think Orlando's playing exceptionally hard, but they have to play with a higher IQ. The fouls they're committing, both on Bryant and now Batiste's two fouls against Luke Walton, are just not smart fouls. Courtney Lee, Mike Petris, and Batiste each with two now for Orlando. Walton on the drive. Vujicic puts it up. Strong. Won't go. And a rebound goes to Nelson. Nice boxing out for Tony Batiste. And also a good job out of perimeter, guys. Nelson getting in and helping. Nelson's jump shot missed by about a foot. It has been a struggle for him coming back after the surgery on his shoulder. Missed four months. He says, I'm not myself. I haven't been aggressive. First two times he's got the ball, he's pretty aggressive, although obviously unable to knock it down. Well, I was very impressed with him last game, how he put his body on the line and got in the mix, like you just said, on rebounding situation. Vujicic again. That won't go. And a rebound goes to Nelson. Vujicic is nightmare shooting in these postseason. And it's really been tough for him. And a three-second violation. Howard was sitting there for a long time, and they just didn't see him right away. But he's he's wide open. But if you're Dwight Howard, if you don't get the basketball, you got to recognize, get out of the paint, and then get back in. At some point, Paul Gasol says, "Are you kidding me? That's six seconds." But I understand his frustration. 
He is wide open as Luke mm -hmm. Walton knocks it in. And they've got to be able to deliver. Well, the Magic have outshot the Lakers by a lot. And have out-rebounded them by a lot. But the turnovers have hurt. 7-1. Seven, 7 for Orlando. Just the 1 for the Lakers. Redick off the dribble. Rattles it in. J.J. Redick didn't play at all in game three. Well, it knocks down that shot. But you can tell that a point of emphasis for the Orlando Magic is pick and roll situations. The ball handler has got to look to be aggressive, look to score. They're certainly doing that. Josh Powell won't go. Powers with his 12th rebound. He knocks down his buddy in the process. Lewis for three. Al Gasol, quick outlet. Drew Jackson said they can play any tempo. Move their successful up tempo, but moves in a half court as well. Ruyacic likes the up tempo game. Gasol. His first field goal. When he makes that jump shot, he's so difficult to defend because if you close on him, he has the ability to drive the ball by you. Redick again off the dribble. Finds Batie wide open. Batie likes that shot and connects again. Tell you what, outstanding feed from J.J. Redick. Good job of getting into the scene and then delivering the basketball on point. Redick, one of the great scorers in college basketball history. This year has become more of a facilitator for Stan Van Gundy. Parmar gets it into Walton. Walton triple team looking for an opening. Finds Boyacic back to Farmar. Nice little fake. That's a three. And hits the shot clock, magic ball. Lakers now 0 for 6 from downtown. Redick making plays, dribble penetration on point to Petit, knocks down the jumper, and he's not finished there. This JJ is having a good time, in rhythm, knocks down the Jake, Dino Mike. <laughs> Ten years ago, it was the Eastern Conference Finals Game 6. <laughs> Mark Jackson, Patrick Ewing, Larry Johnson. It was the Pacers and the Knicks. Jackson with a nice little jumper. Boy, he looks thin. Jeff Van Gundy, the head coach of the eight-seeded Knicks. Allen Houston had maybe considering the importance of the game, his best game as a pro. He was spectacular, unstoppable. And the Knicks were able to win it 90-86 to and head to the NBA Finals as the number eight seed where they would face the San Antonio Spurs. All right, Jeff, you first. What do you remember most? Allen Houston was beyond great in that game. Closing the game down the stretch. He got any shot he wanted. And then I remember Mark Jackson making a three to cut it to five with like 40 seconds. And Allen Houston was backed up under the three-point line. I thought I was going to lose my mind. <laughs> Mark? I remember beat him, beating them the other times. I don't recall that one. <laughs> Turkoglu, pretty move. Vito Turkoglu with 12 points. He's four for four from the field. And then the next year, they beat us in game six at home to go to the finals. Brown has been in. They saw a nice move right at four time. The Lakers have played all 12 guys already. Lewis, nice pass inside. Pretty feed. Mark Finnan, Mark Tock gives him an eight-point lead, the largest of the first half. There's been times in this first half where the magic ball movement has been as good as we've seen. Walton got bumped. And they're going to call it in the act, so he'll shoot two free throws. These are the fouls that I'm talking about. You cannot be given as we watch Gortat on the roll. That's a nice pass by Lewis and a good catch and finish by Gortat. But on the other end, to foul Luke Walton on the drive instead of making him finish, that's just not sound basketball by Turkoglu. He's got to make him make. Turkoglu is his first foul. As Walton misses the first free throw. But I totally agree with you, Coach. That's a tough play for Luke Walton. Trust that your defense has done the job and force him to make that shot. And what Turkle is trying to do is make it harder to get an entry pass into the paint. Lewis for three. It's a 10-point lead for the Orlando Magic. Lewis's first field goal. 
But you know, if Jameer Nelson comes off that pick and roll just running the play, the defense doesn't react because he comes off the score and leaves the open shot for Lewis. Where top picks it up and then throws it out of bounds. This is the largest lead of the finals for Orlando. They had that nine-point advantage early in the fourth quarter of game three, their first double-digit lead of this series. But the turnovers are preventing them from having an even larger margin. They played great, minus that aspect, but that's like, you can't play great if you're turning it over that much. Eight turnovers to just one. Fisher's back in. Fisher, Odom, Gasol, and Bryant. And Luke walks for the five starters of return for the Lakers. Odom takes it to the basket, right-handed. For top may have gotten a piece of it. Ball still loose. Lewis picks it up. Here come the Magic. Nelson was open. Turco didn't see him. He wants to take Walton to the basket. Reddick open again. And Lewis grabs it. Bryant takes it back. Good hustle play from Kobe Bryant. Crowd wanted a foul. Gasol, quick spin move. Right at court, Chatton drops it down. And how good is Paul Gasol? You talk about showing us everything on the offensive end. Knockdown, jump shot, dribble penetration that time. Fundamentally sound on the post. Nelson to the basket. Can't get the reverse to go. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Gasol. Nelson pleading for a foul. Talking about a skilled big man with patience. Spins to the baseline, nothing there. Little dream move coming back to the middle. He ain't regains his balance and the sweet jump hook. That's a great defensive job as well. Turkoglu. Rebounding numbers, 17-9. Odom to the basket. Can't get that sweeping shot to go. Gasol knocked down. He's arguing with Scott Foster as he comes up the floor. He just passed the midway point of the second. Another strong start for the Orlando Magic. Turkoglu draws the foul on Odom. And that's three fouls on Lamar Odom. He's upset with Bennett Salvatore. Well, as much as the Magic have reacted to Kobe Bryant's shot fakes, the Lakers have reacted to Turkoglu. To me, that's a good call. you got to stay down and make people make shots. And I love this piece of officiating. Let the big men battle. Kobe Bryant front in the low post. Rashard Lewis trying to get it. Then when the ball's in the air, both guys fighting for it. That's good basketball by both guys. We survived that quarter, right? We got to play better basketball with that. Stop the ball. Stop the ball. It's all penetration. Stop the drivers. The Magic playing hard even after the victory. Kobe Bryant. So a lot of people told him after game three, hey, the Magic set a shooting finals record and barely won. Kobe says to his teammates, don't listen to that stuff. Don't sit here and, and think, oh, this team shot. 75% in the first half, you know, 62 and a half percent for the game. They only won by two. Don't think that way, because this team can shoot 70, 60 percent for weeks at a time, and that's why they're here. It's not an aberration. It's not oh they had a hot night. It's <laughs> they can do this for a long time. And so we got our work cut out for ourselves to try to slow that down. Well, they're not shooting it at the pace they did in Game Three, but still pretty strong. 52 percent from the field. That sounds like a coach to me right there. Seriously, that's what a coach would say after a game. Is don't let all that noise coming at you about, oh, they can't do that again. Don't buy into that. Let's check in with Doris. Guys, real frustration on the Lakers staff with the blown coverages. There's two ways they're trying to guard the Magic offense, and the guys are confusing it. So the Lakers right now not understanding or not at least executing what the game plan is, guys. Bynum back in. Quick shot is good. Bynum, he barely played before he picked up his second foul. Takes his first shot attempt. Seven point Orlando lead. Good help defense there from Bynum. Reddick, nice pass, score top to finish. J.J. Reddick setting up his teammate beautifully again. You know, I was telling Mark at the last time out, 
J.J. Redick has really improved since he's come into the NBA. He's a solid defender. He doesn't make mistakes. He puts it on the floor better. He's a better passer. He just hasn't found the ability to shoot as well as he did in college. So ironic. Such a great shooter, such a great scorer. But a completely different role now. Gasol stripped down low by Turkoglu and knocked out of bounds. It's a good job of coming off the pick and roll. That's fundamental basketball. The drop pass off the Gortat. He gave great minutes in replacement for Dwight Howard. Sustained the energy. And I love the fact that the magic on the defensive end. They are competing. Off the turnover. Howard throws it ahead. Here comes Reddick. Waits. Slips. Heckler right there to clean it up. Even on a broken play, it works for the Magic, who go up by 11. Down the other end, Ariza. Howard got a piece of it. Gasol blocked from behind, but a foul. And Richard Lewis upset with the call. A little bit of Murphy's Law right now for the Orlando Magic. My mom told me when it rains, it pours. Good things happen when you work extremely hard. The Magic certainly doing that. Reddick tripping, come up with the pass. And a technical foul on the Laker bench. I don't know if it was Phil Jackson or Frank Hamlin, the assistant. There's Hamlin, one-time head coach. Long-time NBA man. He was hot. They announce it, but it's against Phil Jackson. Either way, it's a technical free throw from Reddick. When I talk about competing on the defensive end, Two possessions ago, J.J. Redick defended Kobe Bryant. Works his tail off as far as denying contesting. Bryant drops it off the power of the soul being defended by Turkle. Two guys that technically are overmatched, but they competed and they came up with a stop. So now Gasol will shoot the two free throws on the personal foul. That last foul on Lewis was his first. Gasol six points. Misses that. You know, Redick, again, we talk about the adjustment. He said it's been a humbling experience going from being the guy at Duke to being a role player, sometimes not playing. And he even admitted, he said, I needed to be humble. But he kept working at it. He's been a good teammate. And as you guys have said, he's improved in so many other ways to have an impact on this team's success. If you look at him athletically, he's not overly talented for an NBA player. He's got, he's small, he's a little bit slower, but the guy competes. Austin misses a three. Gasol the rebound. Ariza. Bryant, a long three. Drills it. Kobe Bryant, big shot. He's got 16. And that cuts it to eight. Kobe Bryant's scared. When he's on the floor, it's almost like, hey, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right, guys. A blocking foul on Bynum. Some frustration for the Lakers. Three on Andrew Bynum. Well, this guy is the bully walking in the alley with everybody else. He just gives you confidence. Even when things are going bad, the ability to make plays and put a team on his back. you got to pay attention to Brian. There's no question. They play with his guts. You know, when he establishes himself as so good, you just get carried away with the emotion. You always know, the bully's got my back. That's right. Offensive foul, Lewis a moving screen. The officials are now telling players on both teams to stop complaining. Lewis and Derek Fisher have some words. Fisher walks away with a smile. So Lewis picks up his second. Michael Petrus is going to come back and Reddick's going to sit down. Reddick three points and three assists off the bench and some good hustle plays. And this is a big 352 for the Orlando Magic. You want to have something to show for an outstanding first half. Don't allow the Lakers to gain momentum. And if you weren't looking at the score, you'd think the Magic were up by a pretty big number. It's only an eight-point game. But it's the turnovers, Mike. You have double-digit turnovers. It's hard to establish a big lead. Gasol, back out Fisher. Good open look for three. Short, rebound tipped. Good pursuit by Gasol to help keep that alive. Petrus on him. Petrus has two fouls. Bryant pulls up. Too strong on the jumper. Wow, the rebound, but lost it to Turkoglu. Oh. 
Lewis shoots over Powell. Three-pointer won't go. Howard keeps it alive for his 13th rebound of the half. Howard against Gasol. Backs in up top. Turkoglu. Little fake. Drives again. Petrus. That's a three. Howard is fouled by Powell. Howard tried to put it back in. Powell hit him. And a timeout will be called. An eight-point lead for the Orlando Magic as they try and tie this series up tonight. Well, it's just good work by Dwight Howard from start to finish. Active on the offensive board, multiple jumps. This is how you want work if you want to be a great big guy. Ball comes in, he throws it out. Instead of standing, he keeps on the move. The ball goes up, air ball pass to him, 14 rebounds. That's a career for a lot of guys. Playing for an NBA championship, 23-year-old Dwight Howard, already in his fifth year in the league. And again, they're bottling him up in terms of scoring, but he came out with a force. 14 rebounds, as many as the entire Laker team. He also has four block shots, a big part of why the Magic up by eight. And he'll shoot some free throws right now with 2.46 remaining here in the second. Howard will get to the line again. He's only two for six. He's done an excellent job from the line for him during this series, but not tonight so far. Nobody attempted more free throws during the regular season. And that one won't go as well. I don't want to tell people about a special announcement. We see the two coaches today vying for a championship. Well, another coach who won a couple of championships with the Celtics received an award today. It was announced the Coaches Association announced the Chuck Daly Lifetime Achievement Award. The Hall of Famer, of course, who just recently passed away. We had those pins on the lapels throughout the playoffs. Well, they established a Lifetime Achievement Award in his name. And Tommy Heinsohn, the former Celtic coach, now broadcaster, is the first recipient of the Chuck Daly Lifetime Achievement Award. And certainly deservedly so, a man who's dedicated his whole life to the NBA. Well, because he's such a great announcer now with the Boston Celtics, you forget how good a coach he was. I mean, he coached some great, great teams led by Dave Towns. As another illegal screen is called. That's on Josh Powell, his second. Great coach, wonderful broadcaster, and some kind of player as well. Well, and also, Mike, you know, with all this stuff that, you know, for Chuck Daly, all he did, Tommy Heinsohn emulated him and what he brought to the coaches association. He started the pension program for the coaches. So it's not just what he did on the floor, it's what he did for so many assistant coaches, you know, who are anonymous, but need that pension. Howard gets it down low, puts it up left hand and drops it in. That's his first field goal. And it puts the Magic back up by double figures. You know, there are times where he certainly shows the ability to be a dominant low post scorer. That is a big time post up move that Dwight Howard needs to do ball. Ryan tried to draw the foul here on Petrus. And, and I think Howard has managed his frustration very well tonight. Not getting the ball when he's wanted to. Being bumped and hit. Missing free throws. This is big time maturity. The last foul on Fisher. Here's the play down the other end before. Now they didn't come at him as hard on the double team that time because he's shown the willingness to pass it out. And then he countered back to his baseline jump hook, much the same way that Pau Gasol does. Two minutes. First two foul minutes on Fisher. 14th foul on the Lakers. We're under the two minute mark here in the first half. Howard across the lane. A little hook. Throws it in. Back to back buckets for Howard. And it's a 12 point lead for the Magic. You talk about having a defender off guard. First time is the jump hook with the left hand. All of a sudden it's a one hand, one handed running right shot. This equals their largest lead. Josh Powell playing minutes with some foul problems for the Lakers. And Powell knocks it down. Josh Powell. And that. Close out by Turkoglu on Josh Powell is similar to the one to a reason. You're playing the score instead of playing the game. you got to close harder to Josh Powell and make him a driver. And I like the Magic going right back to Dwight Howard on the block. Play inside out. Howard goes right at Gasol again. Kicks it out. Petrus. 
Petrie's trying to get Bryant a nice defensive play from Kobe Bryant. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's Laker ball. Stay tuned for the finals. Player of the game vote presented by T-Mobile during the second half of tonight's game. Right now, the early leaders are Howard with his 14 rebounds, Turkler with his 15 points, Kobe Bryant with his 16 points. Ariza gets inside. Jump ball. Howard does it again. Strong defensive play. We, we raised about Kobe Bryant's first half in, in game uh, three. Dwight Howard has been as impressive without scoring as much. There's no question. What he's done is remarkable. They count that as his fifth block. And the tip, two on one. Petras to the basket, up and under. Rose off the rim. And a whistle. And a foul on Fisher on the play. He didn't even hear the whistle. So Petras will shoot two. And a great tip by Dwight Howard to ignite that fast break. Tipped it long to give them the automatic two on one. Another good but not often seen play where a tip leads to a fast break. And here's Petrus signed four-year, $22 million deal this offseason. They had high hopes. They loved his size and athleticism. But in December and January, he missed about 28 games combined, broke his right wrist, hurt his right thumb, his right knee was bad, injured his ribs. And he really wasn't part of the rotation for a while, lost his starting job. But in the playoffs, he started to get back to it. It's his first year at the point with Golden State. And he has really come on in the playoffs. And he's the guy that's on the floor at crunch time more often than not. Even though he comes off the bench. Bryant for three. And a loose ball foul. It's going to go against Turkaloo, who grabbed Ariza before Howard came flying in. Two fouls on Turkaloo. They're not in the penalty. This <laughs> is Turkaloo. Trying to make his point. We have a 20-second timeout. Turkaloo pleads his case. We'll take a quick break. And Mike, something to look for. Here's where the Lakers out of the timeout want to get a quick one, so it'd be a two-for-one situation. Fisher for three. Too strong. Ball batted around. Powell tips it. Last touch by the Lakers. But they accomplished what they wanted. Six-second differential. They'll get two shots. And more importantly, Coach, they got a good look. So you can live with it as a coach when it's a good look. Lakers, one for ten from three-point range. And they go to Howard again. Howard across the lane. That sweeping hook off the mark. Rebound fought for. Last touch by Fisher. And now the Magic will hold it for the final shot of the half. And Stan Van Gundy calls a 20-second timeout. Derek Fisher goes halfway, does a good job rolling away from the half double team. Left-handed jump hook over Pau Gasol, putting on a clinic in this first half. 8.9 remaining. Lakers do not have a foul to give as we wind down the second period. The team looking for someone to get it to. Deflected out of bounds by Fisher. So I'm sort of surprised that Stan Van Gundy didn't insert Hidu Turkaloo, the last possession offensively, arguably his best offensive guy on the floor. And they'll look to try to go high-low here to Dwight Howard in the paint. No reason guarding the inbounds on Petrus. Backs off a little bit. Austin gets it. Austin fires a three. Off the mark, Powell the rebound, and that will end the first half. In game three, it was the Orlando Magic offense that was sensational. Here in game four, their defense just superb as they hold the Lakers to 37 points and 33% shooting from the field. And they got a huge performance from Dwight Howard, 14 rebounds, five block shots. He's with Doris. Dwight, you did not get your first couple of field goals till late in the second period, yet you had a major influence on the first half. What were you looking to do early? Well, just uh, try to be aggressive on the defensive end, uh, block shots, rebound, and make it tough for those guys to score. 
Yeah, but we got two more halves, so we got to keep it up. Well, two more quarters, so we got to keep it up. Your defense solid in the first half. The Lakers under 40%. What are you doing to influence them on the defensive end? Well, we're moving our feet. You know, we're not going for a lot of pump fakes and um, just having fun. Dwight, thank you. Mike? Yeah.